בחודש כסלו. The month of light, the month of encouragement, the month of prayer, the month of miracles. Last week, we learned from Parashat Toldot so many things. This entire Chumash Berashi talks about, not so much about mitzvot, but most about Jewish history, about our forefathers, our mothers. What can we learn from it? Last week, we see something very interesting. From the beginning, the creation of the world, we see something sad, very sad in humanity. We see brothers and sisters being jealous of one another. Kind and evil, kind kills evil. Akov and Esav, which last week we learned about how they were born, they were twins. Yaakov listened to his mother, which we're not going to get so much into this because this is not the point of today's lecture. But he, Yaakov steals the blessings from his brother. His mother tells him, run, run to Haran, go to your uncle, to my brother. Go. Why? Because Esav had something very powerful in him. He was a wicked boy. Very, very wild wicked. But there was something very powerful in him. His kibud avaim was to the ultimate level. Itzhak Avinu loved him so much that he told him, go, make me food, go get a goat, make me good meal, come back to me. I'm going to eat and I'm going to bless you. And instead, Yaakov goes in with the manipulation that Rivka is teaching him to do. And he steals the brachot. Esav comes back home. He comes with the food to his father and he says, who are you? This is Esav, what do you mean, Abba? What do you mean? You asked me to give you food. I'm here, I got you food, I want you brachot. And his dad says, I am so sorry, my dear son. Your brother came here and took the brachot. And it says that Esav screams from within. Vaitzak is Esav, Zaka, Gdola, Umara. He screams from within. He yells. And he says, Abba, you couldn't say from me one beracha. One Abba. Yaakov runs away because that moment, Yitzchak says it and he's not embarrassed. He says it that his mother hears him and he says, wait until you die, Abba, because I will kill my brother. He says it straightforward in the Torah. I will kill my brother when my father dies. His mother hears it and she says to Yaakov, quickly, you have to go. You have to go and you have to remain there until your brother is going to come down because he's angry. Yaakov goes, he goes. And over there we know he sees Rachel, the, fir, the, the love at first sight. This is where it comes from. He sees Rachel and he falls in love with her right away. But let's put this aside. We're going to come back to it in a few minutes. We have, we see so much jealousy among brothers and sisters. I want you to pay attention that these brothers and sisters does not only mean biological brothers and sisters. It could also mean communal national brothers and sisters. We have another couple here who could have easily be added to the list of brothers and sisters, siblings being jealous of one another, and they are Rachel and Leah. But we are so lucky to be the daughters of such mothers who said, absolutely not. I am not going to be added to this list of siblings being jealous of one another, both of them. 
and they teach us that there are two medicines to jealousy within a family. The first one we learn from Leah. And what does she teach us? What's the, what's the medicine? The prescription is be happy for someone else. Encourage someone else. And Rachel is teaching us the obvious tzniut, to be humble, to, to, be, to have humility, to have tzniut, to feel for one another, to care for Yenam. She's teaching us the tzniut of not stepping on someone else's blood, caring for someone else's feelings. And how do we know that? We know the story that Yaakov loves Rachel very much. He sees her and they love her. He loves her on a first sight. And he comes to Lavan, he says, let me marry your daughter, Rachel. He says to him, I'm sorry, if you want to marry her, you have to work for me seven years for free. He works seven years for free. And he knows, he knows his future father-in-law. He knows he's a wicked man and very manipulative, a thief. He knows that it's gonna be very hard for him to actually get the younger one, Rachel. So he goes to Rachel every night and he tells her how beautiful she is, how sweet she is, how smart she is, how wonderful she is every night. But right before the wedding, he tells her, let's make signs between us so that if God forbid your father thinks of any trick, I will know that it's you. And she said, yes, I agree, absolutely, let's do it. And they create signs between themselves. At the end, we know that the day of the wedding, Rachel is being mebater, she is giving up the biggest opportunity of her life. She is not only giving up her husband, she is not only giving up the love of her life, she is giving up the opportunity to ever get married. Let's mind you that back in the day, they knew who's gonna marry who. They knew Leah will marry Esa because she's the oldest one and he's the, older one, the one, oldest one. And Rachel is gonna marry Yaakov because they are the younger ones. Rachel comes from the word Rachamim. Same thing, Rachel Rachamim. The day of the wedding, she didn't think. She did not think that she will have this amount of compassion. I will not let my sister Leah get embarrassed in front of everybody. When her father came to her, to Rachel, on the day of her wedding, all dressed up in the beauty, beautiful dress that she has sewed for herself. It's not like today we buy it. She had, for, she, for seven years, she sewed that dress for herself. Every day she put one, one beautiful um, um, stone, one beautiful embroidery on her dress. She used to imagine herself, how she's walking down the chuppah with the love of her life, how she's becoming a mother in the Jewish nation, how she's, go she's going to have all these 12 shivatim. And then in one second, her father comes and tells her, oh, Rachel, you look so beautiful. Wow, your dress is amazing, and your hair, and your makeup. Wow, I'm so sorry, but you need to take that dress off and give it to your sister because she's getting married tonight. And Rachel is not, she's not like, okay, let's drag, I'll take off my dress and give it to Leah. She keeps the simanim and she says to herself, I don't care, I'm gonna give her my dress but my father will get caught because my, my fiance will know, he will know. But right before Leah is about to walk that, down the, 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 the aisle where Yaakov is gonna ask her the simanim, is gonna ask her the signs, Rachel is not able to stay by and say, oh, I am going to walk down that chupa. My sister is gonna put to shame my sister is going to put to disgrace. She couldn't handle it. And right away, she runs to her sister and she tells her the simanim. She tells her the signs. So she doesn't get embarrassed, leaving and giving up on everything, everything. The next morning, 
Yaakov wakes up in the morning. Ta-da! Vehinoi zolea. And he finds out that the woman he married is not Rachel. It's actually her sister. He's fuming. He is so upset. He goes back to Lavan and he says, Lama zot remitani. He said, why did you cheat me like that? Why did you do this to me? And what does he say? He says those words. Lo yaase ken bibkomenu. Latet haketana lifnea bechira. We will not do this kind of things here. We will not give the younger one before the older one. No, we will not. We will not tolerate this. We will not be okay with that. Lo yaaseken bimkomenu, he tells him. Lo yaaseken bimkomenu, we will not do such a thing. Let's take a minute to look where else in the Tanakh, where else in the Tanakh, it says, Lo yaaseken bimkomenu, the same exact words. Good job. That's the first one. So the first one we have is Rachel and Leah that Lavan tells Yaakov, Lo yaaseken bimkomenu, this will not happen here under my watch. This is not going to happen. Where else? We see the first one here in Rachel and Bea. The second time that we see it is next week parasha. The week parasha after uh, Vayetze, which today, this week's parasha is parashat Vayetze, and this Rachel and Bea situation is happening in this parasha. The parasha after, we know that Yaakov has 12 stripes, but he also has daughters. One of his daughters is called Dina, okay? Dina is a beautiful girl. Dina bat Yaakov. That's where we come from, but not Yaakov, the daughters of Yaakov. From her, from Dina. Dina goes outside for a friendly reunion. She's going to say hello to her friends, to her girlfriends. And while she goes outside, there is this guy. He's, he happens to be a prince. His name is Shem ben Hamo. He sees her. He desires her. He's infatuated with her. He takes her despite her will. And he violates her. He disgraces her, her reputation, her father's reputation. But when he's done, he's not done. He wants more. He goes to Yaakov and with his audacity, he is asking to marry her. Yaakov hears that his daughter was disgraced, was violated. He is in such pain. He is in such pain that he's not able to speak. It says in the Torah that Yaakov keeps quiet until his sons come back from the fields. They were not home at the time. When the sons come back from the field and they learn that their sister was disgraced, was violated, they decide to outsmart Shechem ben Hamo. And they tell him, no problem. You want to marry her? You and your father and all these people that you rule will have to do Brit Milah because we don't marry people who don't, were not circumcised. Yeah, Shechem ben Hamo said, that's what I need to do. That's what we're going to do. He did it. His father did it. The entire people of whoever, whoever they ruled did it. And on the third day is known. The third day is the hardest day, the most painful day of circumcision. Shimon and Levi, the brothers of Dina, go and kill the entire Shechem. They kill them all. Yaakov hears that they kill them all. He says to his sons, 
Are you normal? Are you normal? How many are we? How many are we? 12, 15, 20? Compared to all these people? They're gonna come, they're gonna kill us. They're gonna take the land that God has promised me and my forefathers. How? What were you thinking? Shimon and Levi looked at their father very calmly and they said, Lo yase ken bimkomenu. We will not allow such thing to happen here. Not under our watch. Not to a bat Yaakov, not to the daughter of Yaakov. Halezona yasim et achotenu? Is, the, is that okay, Abba? Is that okay for him to make our do, our our the sister? <laughs> I don't even know how to say it in a right in, in, in a clean way. A woman who is not who is not respected to uh, to to even think about doing it, doing it again, or letting other people to think about that this is okay. This is not okay, Abba. This is not okay, and Hashem is with us. You see, Hashem helped us. We had victory. Don't worry, Haba. They will not kill you, and they will not take the land that God has promised to us. Because lo ya second bim komenu, this will not happen here. We will not tolerate such a behavior. The third place that it is mentioned in the Torah is by Amnon and Tamar. David the Melech marries a couple of women. From one woman, he has Avshalom and his sister, Tamar. From another woman, he has another son called Amnon. Amnon is infatuated with his sister from a different mother. He's attracted to her. He is lusting her. He wants her, but of course he can't have her. She's his sister. He doesn't know what to do. He lost her. He wants her. He's gone crazy to the point that he gets very sick. He gets very sick and one of his friends is very worried for him. And he says, Amnon, what's going on with you? Are you okay? And he said, I'll be honest with you, my dear, my best friend, I don't know, I am very much attracted. I'm very much in infatuation with the woman who happens to be my sister. So this best friend of his tells him, don't worry. You keep on laying in your bed because you're sick. Call your father and tell him that you want Tamar to come and bake for you and, and feed you, and that's going to make you feel better. And that's exactly what Amnon does. He calls his father and he says, Abba, I'm not feeling well. Can you please tell Tamar to come and bake for me so that I, he, she can feed me and I will feel better? Tamar comes to his room. She bakes in front of him. And then... He tells her, Tamar, can you feed me, please? And she says, sure, no problem. She comes, she feeds her brother. And at that moment, he catches her. He holds her. And he says, Tamar, let's lay together. And Tamar is saying to him, Amnon, what are you talking about? Lo yase ken bimkomenu. This will not happen here. This will not be okay. This will not be tolerated. What are you talking about? You're going to be punished for this. I'm going to be disgraced. Who is going to ever marry me? What are you even saying? When he sees that Tamar is not about to give in, He does what he does. He disgraces her. He violates her. And she's screaming and she's crying, but it doesn't help her. And then when he's done, it says right the verse after starts. 
Vaisnaea Amnon. And then it says, right after he's done with what he's done, all of a sudden, the love that he had for her, the great love that he had for her, turns into big hate. By the way, to all of us single girls, to, to teach us something here, this is a big red flag when a guy lasts us, is so attracted to us, and all he can think about is erotic things. This is not the real love. Because when he gets what he wants, he's out the door. What does Amnon say to her? Get away from here. And she's crying and she's begging. She's begging him. And he calls his servant and he says, take her from here and close the door so I don't see and don't hear her. And that's what his servant does. Her brother of Shalom, the brother from the same mother, hears this. He takes his sister in. He says to her, don't worry. I will give you a place to be, a place to stay. She had all the girls who had never been with anybody in David Melech's uh, palace were wearing a certain type of clothes to say that I am available to get married and that I am, that I've never been with anybody else. She had to take this clothes off her. So Avshalom knew exactly what happened to her. He takes her home, he takes care of her. Two years later, to make a long story short, Avshalom kills Amnon. Lo ya'aseken bimkomenu. I will not keep quiet for something as disgraceful, as horrifying, as putting a woman's pain like this, ignoring the pain of my sister. I will avenge and revenge her respect, her dignity, and he kills Amnon. Lo ya'aseken bimkomenu, says Lavan to Yaakov. What does he mean, lo ya'aseken bimkomenu, here? Here, right? What's here, over here? He's trying to pinch Yaakov and say, where you come from, it's okay to steal the, the, the brachot, the blessings from your oldest brother. But over here, it is not okay just that you know. Girls, God forbid. I would never even try, or nobody should ever try, to compare the pain of a disgraced, violated woman to the pain of a older sister that her younger sister gets married ahead of her. It's not to compare. So yet, why does the Torah, why Chazal are even mentioning this as part of the three times that the Torah says the same exact word, lo ya'asegen bimkomenu, to teach us a very important message. Ignoring someone else's feeling is not okay, should not be tolerated. Rachel Leah is being the oldest one. She's happy for her sister, but does that mean that she's not in pain? Does that mean that she doesn't feel inside, hey, I'm the oldest one. The privilege of being first is being taken from me, despite my will. Yes, it might not be your fault that you're getting married in front, uh, ahead of me. It might not be your fault that you have a better job than me. It's not be your, it might not be your fault that you have a better husband than me, better children than me, more children than me, that you have more parnasa and a better job than me, that you have more grandchildren than me, that your children get married to better spouses and, 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 and wives. It might not be your fault. But do not ignore my pain. Lo yaaseken bimkomenu. So what are we saying, little, little sister, Rachel? Should you get married or not according to halacha? 
Are you allowed to get married before your oldest sister? Yes. Yes. If a youngest sister, a younger sister has found the right match for her, she should get married. But don't forget to take your, your older sister along. Don't forget to share with her. Don't forget to support her. The worst thing you can do is ignore her. Do not ignore. Share. Share with her your happiness. And what about you, older sister? What about you? Because you were bypassed, does that mean that the world has collapsed? That's it, you stayed behind, you're delayed, you'll never have good life, you'll never be successful? <laughs> First of all, absolutely not. Second of all, you, as the oldest one, have the biggest choice to make at this moment. And what is this choice? Just like you are the Bechira, the Bechora. You are the Bechora in Hebrew, the oldest one is called Bechor, Bechora. You have the ability, the opportunity to make the biggest choice. And that choice is to acknowledge that your sister is having the biggest happiness day of her life. Be happy for her, just like Leah. Do you think that Leah knew she will get married? She had no idea until the last minute. She knew for sure. I'm not getting married to Esav, that's for sure. My sister is getting married to Yaakov and she's getting married before me, which means that I'm never getting married. I'm never going to have children. Forget about being the, the mother in the Jewish nation. She is ready and she knows it, but she is happy for her sister. She helps to prepare for the wedding. She helps her sew her wedding dress. She prepares, she helps her do her hair, her makeup. She's helping her decorate her, 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 her wedding ceremony area. She's happy for her. She's making a conscious choice not to be upset not to hurt, not to avenge, not to revenge, and most of all, not to ignore. <coughs> and why not? <laughs> we will not do such a thing here. It is not okay to step on, on, on someone else's blood. It is not okay to allow somebody else's to be embarrassed. If you are not happy for your sister on her biggest day, how do you think she feels? How do you think she's gonna walk down that aisle? Not to get too deep into this personal story of mine, but so was I, bypassed by four siblings, younger siblings. Not only I got the chance which one day I will tell you the story, which is fascinating of how it happens. It is so emotional, funny, and you can include all the, all the emotions in it. But I got the chance to practice both Rachel and Leah. Give my younger siblings the opportunity to get married to the love of their life, to build a home, to have children, to advance in life, but from happiness, knowing that I support and acknowledge them, that I'm happy for them. And my righteous siblings have done their part in this as well. They have included me, they have shared with me. I got the chance to be mevater, to let them go ahead and to be happy, with, with, to be happy for them. So Achot Gedola, older sister, or the one ahead of you, whoever that person is ahead of you. You get to merit what Leah merited. When you are able to make this conscious choice to be happy for someone else, 
to have the tikva and the hope that this will happen to you too and big time, it will. Because אפילו חרב חדה מונחת על צווארו של אדם לא יתייאש מן, הח... מן הרחמים. אמין את, אמין את, before a hell walks down that chupa, down that, that, that um, aisle. Her father comes and says, take off your dress, give it to your sister. She had the hope until the last minute. You will benefit. You will benefit big time. Not only you will get married, not only you will have children, you will have the most children and the most successful children. Leah married to have kehuna. She married to have also malchut, royalty. Because of what? Because she was able to be happy for her youngest sister. She had no idea she'll be the one getting married. And Rachel, what with you? Rachel, the little sister, the one who is mevater, the one who has humility, the one who has humanity, caring for someone else, not to get hurt, not to be embarrassed to the point that they want to die, not stepping on somebody else's blood. We all know. Rachel merits to have two sons, yes, Yosef and Benjamin, that from them comes the first king of the Jewish people called Shaul HaMelech. Not only that, she merits to have Esther, Malkat Esther, the queen of Esther, queen, queen Esther, come from her descendants, from Benjamin. So why? Why should we do this? Why should, why should we pray for someone else? Why should the youngest sister pray and won't stop praying for the older one? The one who is ahead, whoever that person is, pray for the one that is not there yet. Why? Because Hashem is with this person who is suffering, who is in the darkness, who is hoping, who is waiting, because he says the same thing. Lo yase. Ken bimkomenu. I will not tolerate my daughter being in pain. You're in pain, you feel ashamed, you feel disgraced, you feel behind, you feel like people forgot you and left you behind, you feel like people stole from you. Don't worry, I not under my watch, Hashem says, not under my watch. I will make sure that your prayers and your wishes come true. Now, with that being said, with this being said, there is another point I want to make. And that's a very touchy point. October 7, 2023. My sisters were disgraced. Our sisters were put to shame. Our sister were violated. Lo ya seken bimkomenu, sisters. We will not keep quiet. We should not keep quiet. Because Amnon did it, because Shimon and Levi didn't, because Hashem didn't. This is called milchemet mitzvah. We have to fight because this is the last fight. Whether it is on a personal level, take it as a sister that got violated. Whether it's on a community level, whether it's on a national level. We are not, as women, allowed to keep quiet. Keep it quiet is not an option. My sister was violated. Whether we see it as an actual person who were violated over there, or the entire community, or my nation, my nation was violated. Lo, lo ya second bimkomen. We are not going to allow this. We are not going to tolerate this. We are all going to the army, to the IDF. There are different departments. There are the departments who actually go to Gaza and fight. There are the people who actually go and care for these for this, uh, IDF soldiers. There's people who cook, who clean, who, who, uh, who, who give money who volunteer. I'm sure all of you already done many of this. But some of us are outside of Israel. We don't have much to do about this. But who here can tell me that they don't have a couple of minutes or every second they have the conscious 
to say פרק תהילים. Say one פרק תהילים. Our sisters were violated in such mass amount. It is not okay. It is not okay. We have, I've, I've heard our nation is so united. It is so beautiful. I see women send their husband to learn Torah. Look at all the yeshiva bachurim. You think they sit and they do nothing? No, many of them have went to the army. They joined the army physically. They study non-stop Torah. Their mothers, their daughters, their, their, their wives are supporting them. The entire Jewish people at a mass level making a frashat chala. I see girls burning nice nude clothes. Whoa! Bet HaMikdash Rishon was destroyed on a year that Rosh Hashanah fell on Shabbat. Do you know why? Because there was no shofar. Bet HaMikdash Yashini, the second Bet HaMikdash, the second temple was destroyed on a year that Rosh Hashanah fell on Shabbat. Do you know what that means again? No shofar. The Holocaust started on the year that Rosh Hashanah fell on Shabbat because there was no shofar. This year, my dear sisters, this year Shabbat, Rosh Hashanah fell on Shabbat when there is no shofar. Which what tells us that the shofar protects us so much. But I want to tell you a big secret. There is something bigger than the shofar, bigger than the shofar to protect us. It's called Shabbat. Atem teshamru oti v'ani ashamer otchem, it's a promise. You're gonna keep me and I'm gonna keep you. My dear sisters, I don't know if this is there, but it definitely looks like it according to the prophecies. Soon there will not be a choice. So I'm sorry, I'm really sorry that I can't be standing here just like we have done before for years and, 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 and hundreds and thousands of years. I can't stand here and tell you, oh, just do whatever you can, except Shabbat early, light the candles early. Maybe just do this, maybe that's... There is no time! There is no time! You think we are protected in America, outside of Israel? Absolutely not! The most protected people are people, the people of Israel, the people that live in Jerusalem. We are not protected! We want shields, we have to keep Shabbat. We have to care for one another. We have to feel each other's feelings. With this I want to bless us all with the merit of Rachel and Leah, the mefargenet Leah, the encouraged Leah, the encouraging, the happy for other Leah, the, the tzniyut, the humility and humanity of Rachel. Be'ezrat Hashem, the entire Jewish people, Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael will prevail. We will have, Be'ezrat Hashem, a big victory. We will sit back and tell our Abba, just like Shimon and Levi said, don't worry, sit back, look beautiful, because Hashem will fight for you. Hashem will fight for us, but we have to do our part and remember. It says in the Torah, Lo tismach bifol oivecha. We are not allowed to be happy when our enemy falls. So Be'ezrat Hashem with the merit of Rachel and Leah, the merit of Dina and Tamar, we should Be'ezrat Hashem get married, have children, have parnasa, shlom bright, on top of all, Shashem in kom and damam shel kol ele shenirtzechu leman am Yisrael. Be'ezrat Hashem, that Hashem should send refuah shel ema, refuah ta nefesh refuah ta guf to all the people who are wounded on October 7, which is those physical wounds, and us, we too, we're in pain for what happened. For us, refuah shlema, refuah ta nefesh refuah ta guf. ולכל חולי עמו ישראל. כן, נכון, ובעזרת השם, I should also be in the merit of this, שישחרר את החטופים, that they should come home, בעזרת השם, 
לשלום, בבריאות, ב- בשמחה, באהבה, and we should all dance in the victory of the entire Jewish leader. עם ישראל חי. Let's all light candles and put the car for Rachel and Leanne.